Um, Ollie's gonna be Cerritos material in no time. Oh! Haha, <laughs> starting now! Well, at least she's doing her best. Hello, Internet, I'm Ren, and today I want to talk about Star Trek Lower Decks Season 5, Episode 6 of Gods and Angles. This is going to be a lower tech, lower energy, lesser clip review because I'm traveling, obviously, and still recovering from a three day migraine. Being 30 is great. So consider my energy zapped like some of the characters in this episode, but I am a completionist. So here we are. Anyways, this episode was another mediocre entry into the Lower Decks catalog. Now that we're into the second half of the season, I am beginning to feel more underwhelmed by the amount of episodes that are just fine. This episode was fun. It had some good jokes. And, and I think she's stealing my kettlebells to mess with me. I can't make gains without my bells. And it was cool seeing Mariner in mentor mode. But the A plot left a lot to be desired, and the B plot was another silly throwaway. Although we do finally get to revisit Boimler's alternate universe pad. I could tell because the bevel is 3.7% deeper. Also, it's red. Oh, yeah! So, let's get into it. Spoilers for Lower Decks up to this point. In the A plot, the Cerritos is hosting diplomatic talks between warring photonic energy cubes and spheres whose nebulas collided. Ransom is struggling to manage a young ensign, Ollie. Who said I couldn't stack 100 pieces of circular furniture onto a single sled? I did, and it wasn't a challenge. It was an order who is sort of a demigod as a descendant of the false gods in the TOS episode, Who Mourns for Adonais. She keeps making trouble and having bizarre accidents. Don't worry, I inverted the weight threshold. This bad boy could hold a freaking neutron star. <laughs> when Mariner hears the captain contemplating throwing her off the ship, she offers to take her under her wing. Come on, mom, let me help her out. Eh, she makes a good point. Sometimes the most destructive ensigns just need someone to believe in them. The captain agrees, and the two are tasked with babysitting a young cube. One of the lead cube's kids is acting up, locked themselves in their quarters. We're supposed to get it out and show it a good time. We're babysitting? Ugh. However, when they go to find the cube, the quarters are trashed, and it turns out the cube is missing. He trashed the place. <gasps> Mariner and Ollie are then tasked with investigating it on the down low, so as not to upset the negotiations. I can't have security running around raising suspicions. How about us? Mariner and I are low status enough to fly under the radar. But instead, Ollie finds some anti-cube propaganda in the quarters of a random sphere whose privacy they invade. Check this out! That naked creep's got anti-cube propaganda! Time to shave those edges off once and for all. And jumps to conclusions, accusing the sphere of murder. No, the cubes are weird, but I support an end to hostilities. <laughs> we saw your anti-cube rants, murderer! The murder accusation comes out during the negotiations. Uh, no one is suggesting that any orb murdered any cube. The one with the leaf hat did. And it's revealed that a young sphere is also missing. Where within these accusations do you account for the disappearance of my orbit, Radiara? Your kid is missing too? Hostilities between the two escalate, and the negotiations break down, resulting in a shape war aboard the Cerritos. Ah! Ah, shape war! and Ollie uses her lightning powers to zap the energy away. She also manages to zap Boimler's butt. It doesn't work, resulting in a giant cube and a giant sphere. Turning into anything! Oh my god. It, you know what? It, it's just a bigger orb and a bigger cube! They're not creative at all! But Ollie has another plan involving good old-fashioned engineering and she convinces the bridge crew to allow her to use the tractor beam. I can direct an electromagnetic field into the nacelles. Which would weaken the photonics and charge our shield at the same time. Which is a nice callback to the one she was working on at the start of the episode. You appear to have solved the unit's compression stability problems. Yep, so now I can stack crates without having to move. <laughs> to disable the giant cube and sphere and render them inert. Well, at least powerless when it comes to energy. The cubes and spheres are still mad though and try to just bludgeon each other. We don't need energy to defeat you! Prepare to be bounced upon! Until we get the obvious Romeo and Juliet reveal that the two crazy kids were actually just together. We thought you were dead! Oh, uh, no. We've been together. And they've produced an offspring, the dreidel shaped Squaren. Everybody surprise me! <laughs> this is our child, Squaren. 
The shapes are so excited about the new baby that they agree to resume negotiations. Well, Aaron is perfect. Who knew orbs and cubes were capable of producing such beauty? Now that they know her powers caused most of her issues, Ollie is reassigned to engineering, which is where she always wanted to be. Tomorrow, you'll be reassigned to engineering. It's clearly where you belong. But she's also going to spend a night in the brig. But first, you're spending the night in the brig. What? But I saved everyone! Yeah, you also lied and hid a bunch of evidence. And Mariner hangs out to keep her company. Actually pretty comfy in there. Don't act like we're friends. We are nothing alike. And guess what? I love the brig. This is my favorite place. There's also a B-plot involving Boimler and the alternate universe pad, which reveals that Alt Boimler befriended Ta'ana during this same mission, and she gave him the nickname Flip. Boimler is determined to recreate this and tries approaching Ta'ana in different ways. Initially by sucking up. This medical book will be insightful. Love to flip each page. Which she hates. If you say flip one more time, I'm gonna bite your f***ing nose off. And then by trying to get on her level by cursing. What do you want? Nothing. What's crapping in with you? <gasps> what did you just call me? Which she hates even more. About this! You little your face! I do think maybe this should kind of be a court martial situation, although the animation in this scene is absolutely hysterical. I laugh at it every single time. Ta'ana ultimately befriends Boimler when she has to invent a complicated new procedure that we don't get to see to remove the bolt from his buns. But I could help. I'm gonna go to my room and sleep for the rest of the mission. No way, f My book club's meeting tonight. You gotta swing by. And we learn a questionable lesson from the use of the pad when Rutherford wants to use it too. Staying true to yourself is wrong. You gotta copy someone better. Despite Tendy's objections. Oh, that that's not the lesson to take from this. Phillips has a bi-weekly aquatic aerobics no, class. No, no, no. I gotta use that pad to get it. Overall, this episode was fine. I like the mentor Mariner stuff, and it was nice to see her progressing a bit more this season, since her fear of mentoring was something that was alluded to early on. Ollie is Fine. It's always nice seeing a female character with a thicker body type. I also like her little Roman nose, but it's hard not to be annoyed that she's a reference to one of the worst episodes in TOS that was riddled with some truly bizarre sexism. On the other hand, she's a woman. One day she'll find the right man, off she'll go, out of the service. Mm -hmm. I like to think of it not so much as losing an officer as gaining... Come on. Actually, I'm losing an officer. In between its attempts to be progressive... I am Apollo. I've chosen you. Well, I'm sure that's very flattering, but I must get on with my work now. Your work? I'm a scientist. And as for the Laurel thing, I just don't like it. I think it's weird character design. It's called a Laurel. It doesn't come off. It's a bioluminescent construct I inherited from my stupid ancestors. I'm glad she at least spends a night in the brig for her completely wild conduct, though. Because even Mariner was trying to caution her and rein her in with regards to their investigation, and she was just not having it. Okay, let's feel out this orb. But I do the talking. Feel it, circle! We're on to you! So what? It was season one Mariner level of menace, though, which I assume was the point. Joke's on you, man! I love the brig! I'm going to my favorite place! And I do like the parallels between the two characters, as well as seeing Mariner return to her old bunk. Mariner, you are in your old bunk. The human susceptibility to nostalgia is puzzling. The cubes and spheres honestly did nothing for me though. Their designs aren't interesting, and while the shape jokes did get a couple chuckles out of me here and there. Oh, what is this? What do I do? I've been a parent for five minutes! It wasn't really enough to justify picking these designs instead of creating some aliens that are actually interesting. It seems silly to do such simple aliens when it's presumably one of the last animated Trek installments we'll get for a while, and therefore one of the last chances to execute something really creative that would be harder to achieve in live action. It also feels like it's been done before with Futurama's War is the H-Word over 20 years ago. We must put an end to the bloodshed. We have all seen too many body bags on ball sacks. This episode is watchable, but it leaves a lot to be desired, especially this late in the season. I think it spends too much time on the shapes and not enough time developing Ollie and Mariner's mentorship relationship. The B-plot is also fine. I did absolutely cackle at the running joke about Tendi and Rutherford both noticing that the pad was different, but not noticing that it's red. Does this have anything to do with that alt universe pad you're always secretly reading? You know about it too? Yeah, it has a way wider bevel. It's red! Oh yeah! And the scene with Ta'ana attacking Boimler was so funny. Even if she 
definitely should be getting in some kind of trouble for that. I guess dating the head of security does have its perks. I did enjoy the continued evolution of the Boimler facial hair. That said, it doesn't really tread any new ground with Boimler as a character. I'm trying to trick Dr. T into inviting me to her book club. Okay, so just be yourself. <laughs> That's what I said! It's the same insecure Boimler we've seen off and on since season one, with Tendi even pointing out that we've covered this before in the Hawaii episode. Well, did you learn this with the whole Hawaii thing? Yeah, but this is different. Beard Boimler is me. Where Boimler pretends that he's from Hawaii to bond with Ransom. Yeah, I mean, I am homesick for Hawaii. I grew up in Hawaii, and man, do I miss Hawaii. And then awkwardly has to deal with revealing the truth that he is not from Hawaii. I'm not from Hawaii, sir. I'm from Modesto, California. I just wanted to find a bridge, buddy. I I'm sorry. And then learning the lesson that it's better to just be yourself, except clearly he did not actually learn the lesson. Boimler has sort of felt like he's been treading water all season with continuing to retread the same character beats. It also feels like Rutherford and Tendi hardly have anything to do this season, and it's strange we don't focus on them more when it seems like the writers aren't sure what to do with Boimler. Another notable problem with this episode, at least for me, is that it's the first one that didn't pass the ADHD test this season, which means I had to watch it more than once to fully absorb the story and avoid looking at my phone or getting distracted. It didn't advance the larger storyline with the Fishers, which would be fine if it was great in its own right, but overall, it just felt lackluster. Not even a reference to Worf's hilarious ball chair from TNG was enough to salvage it. But that's just my opinion. What did you think about this episode? Are you a fan of Ollie? What other Greek gods would you like to see in Star Trek going forward? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time. Peter Zane.